Well, here at Hilltop, fresh off the plane, just arrived, is uh, Rob Hazelwood, and we get to talk to him in this latest edition of the TWBC podcast next. The expressed views of the guests on this podcast are theirs alone and not necessarily endorsed by the host, TWBC, or any associated sponsor. Conversations that are robust yet balanced, on point and to the point. You are listening to The Talk of Tournament Water Skiing. This is the TWBC podcast. And now, here's your host, Tony Lightfoot. And hey folks, I am the aforementioned Tony Lightfoot and uh, glad to have uh, the uh, the pleasure of your company. Do excuse the generator going off in the background. Say, what's that? Yeah, and uh, the uh, the guest of this podcast who has just recently flown in. I mean, I mean we're just talking just arrived just minutes ago here at Hilltop is uh, Rob Hazelwood. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Tony. I'm a little a little sleep deprived. We've just been doing the maths. Cole McCormick was bragging that he's been up since 2 a.m. Seattle time, and then I did the maths, and I've been up since 7.30 p.m. last yesterday. So we've, we've been up for like 24 hours, so we're oh, doing yeah. good. Oh, yeah, I have to make those calculations myself on a daily basis because I correspond uh, with uh, with someone in, in Europe and I have to do, like, the, the subtraction, you know, uh, eight hours yeah. this way, two hours that way, you know, and it's it gets especially bad if you ever want to try and call Australia in the middle of the night. Yes. Yeah, no, that's never good. So we've, we're, we're not going to have much sleep, but we've, we're fed, we're watered. We're coming for a ski. We're going to go to practice in today and see how it is. And, yeah, we're back stateside, which is always good. Indeed, indeed. And uh, you've had a, a fairly successful sojourn in Europe, wouldn't you say? Or, 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 or yeah, were you was, looking for something better? I was happy with my placements. The placements were good. I was making finals, a few mess-ups here and there, but um, just not quite the consistency that I was looking for, really. Um, I didn't feel like I had... Last year, I managed to keep... By the end of the season, I had confidence in my performances. I had confidence. So I feel like I, I was lacking a little bit of confidence, but had gone home, had a little bit of a reset, had three weeks at home, haven't done a single tournament, barely left the lake, just kind of skied, relaxed, had fun, kind of back with family and friends, and um, hopefully that's kind of the reset that I needed to to kick, kick get kick started with some consistency again. Well, excellent stuff, and you are uh, in the uh, the part of the world where your ski sponsor uh, currently resides, uh, H- 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 H.O. Syndicate. You we know. are going there tomorrow. Yeah, you're, going, you're, you're actually going to the factory tomorrow and uh, meeting up with, with all of your chummies type, yes. type, type deal. Yep. So uh, what, where are you looking to go? Do you, do you know what the itinerary here is? I have no idea. Uh, Jamie Bull is chief organiser. I know we're, we're just going, have a look and kind of seeing all the faces. And um, and yeah, I, it's always, I went, had to go there last year and um, it's, always, it's always a cool experience to go there and see how it all runs and obviously... We deal with a lot of kind of in front of the scenes. We we get the photo shoots, we get all that stuff, but we don't see much behind the scenes and the hard works and the accounts and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's cool to go see the factory, how the skis are made, and um, and meet all the cool people. Indeed, and don't be surprised if uh, by the end of the day you're scaling some kind of unearthly high rock face, <laughs> you know, with uh, carabiners and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, in the rock Rockies of Seattle, or where we are. Yes, indeed. So. Uh, Europe. I mean, um, I mean, the, I mean, you got a good resu- few good results. You know, uh, some some of the the placements you could have wished higher for. You know, like in the jaw and what have yeah. you. You know, go, going on. You know, so as uh, I mean, I mean, with with, with those, those kind of performances, we now go into the state side yeah. portion of the season, the Malibu Open, the Mastercraft Pro. The Miami tournament, uh, Travers Grand Prix, and Travers Grand Prix, and all and all of that stuff. So, now that you're in the land of the free, home of the brave, <laughs> uh, uh, how uh, how how do you feel things are going to go for you from, from after Europe? Who knows? Who knows? You can't, I can't say anything before coming in. Sometimes you feel like you're skiing horrendously before a tournament goes well, and sometimes you feel like you're skiing well and it's going bad. Uh, it's just it was it was really nice to go home and um, and have a little bit of a reset. Um, just kind of away from tournaments. I mean, for May 1st, other than Masters weekend, because I didn't make Masters, obviously, yeah. um, all the way through till the, the end of July to the Jewel, there was a tournament every single weekend. So I essentially had one weekend off, and I basically used that weekend to go on a different ski. So I didn't really have a single weekend off from May 1st to, to <sighs> July. It's kind of a dream. I mean, it's a dream come true. I'm not complaining at all. No, no, of um, course not. I mean, it because it's, I mean, I mean when, when was the last time this ever happened? Oh. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, Back in the halcyon uh, days does, of the, the bud tour, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And, it, and it's been super cool to be able to kind of just be out here and do it and do everything. And I, I just, this year I committed, I'm like, right, I'm doing everything. 
I'm doing absolutely everything. I had, I mean, one week we had a, f- f- to get to the Don Martin tournament, we had a had a photo shoot in the week. I flew out Thursday, d- got in a car, dad picked me up from the airport, we drove straight to France, like straight there. And I was wow. like, I'm doing every single professional tournament this season. That was kind of my goal. Because um, I think if you go in and start picking and selecting, and I had the opportunity to go to them all, I could, I could make it happen. Um, and you kind of got to put your, put your hat in to, to get anything. And that was kind of the goal. And, uh, it's been an experience because obviously last year we didn't have any European tournaments because of all the COVID, and it was so we had a nice break. But it's been a challenge to to go out there, do everything, see everything, go new places, get three days of practice in between a tournament, and I've learned a hell of a lot from this from this uh, from this trip. And hopefully, I can take what I've learned kind of the start of the year and keep keep it moving into the US part of the tour. And right and slap bang in the middle was the World Games. Yeah, the World Games. That was fun. That was cool. <laughs> that was really cool. Oh, fun, you say that with a little uh, little gleam in your uh, eye. It was, no, it was great. Um, obviously, everyone knows the conditions weren't top notch. But th- I think that's what we're here for. They're like, uh, we can't expect to ski at beautiful places like, like Hilltop behind me. Perfect. We know what's yeah. going to happen. It's it's there's there's no excuses, but I think it's exciting to go to those kind of places every now and then and and, and challenge yourself. We don't. I no one ski, no one turned up to that site and had ever skied anything like it. Yeah, it was worse than what I I don't again. I like in a in a general state, it was worse than what we've ever skied in before. Worse than Malaysia, worse than France. Yeah, but it it, it was a show it, wasn't it it didn't make the event worse that I think the best skiers won on the day I think whoever skied there was very few oh he did this because of the conditions the best skiers did well on the day and it was a fantastic event there was a big crowd there everyone was getting involved and it was it was kind of what the what 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 I've always watched as a childhood it was kind of what I imagined was cool came in took some photos with the fans and everyone saying hello and um, and yeah, the, the lake wasn't great, but the condition, um, but the event as a whole, and kind of being part of an athletes group was was really awesome. And I mean, I saw some of that video that you shot there, the interior of the uh, of the, uh, the the room and stuff yeah. like that, like the heady days in of the home beer pond, you know, <laughs> back, back back in those yeah. days where you where you, where you used to stay in one of those god awful rooms <laughs> next to the two thousand <laughs> meter lake. It was only slightly better than that. That, but I mean, at least you got a decent breakfast out of it. You got the uh, the police escorted. Yeah, uh, I've been watching my vlogs. Everyone. I like it. Yeah, I am. Uh, I do. Look, I, I, I try to stay on touch. Uh, there you, you go. Know? Keeping up, keeping up with the keeping up with the vlogs. I like it. Yes, indeed. And we'll actually talk a little bit about that in there. But I mean, that's about as close what, as one would get in our sport to an Olympic experience, yeah. right? Yeah, and it was, and uh, I think three, was it 2018? Oh, that's like five years ago now. Two, four years ago now, I guess. We in had in the, Rod Suave. In, no, in, we had the World Beach Games. And this was my first ever experience of a, of a multi sport games in, oh, in Qatar. Yeah. And that. it was, and it was kind of like, Tom Ashley didn't go. Jack Ritchie didn't want to go. Joel didn't go. They couldn't go. It was a bit of a weird. It was like end of October. It was a weird time in the season. I was like, ah, why not? I'll go. Like, yeah. And I had no idea what I was signed up for. We had team kit. We went out. Adidas fitted us all up. Wow. And it was like you go out. You get the big dorms, the buses, the security, and like it's such a cool opportunity. And I'm. It was a, probably a stupid idea for me to do half of a Europe tour, fly out to America, fly back to Europe, carry on the European tour in terms of general, like, if I had someone telling me what events to do, they'd go, yeah. that's probably one you should miss, Rob, you know, like, keep your energy, save it. But it was, I, I'm so glad that I said yes. And that kind of comes into an opportunity fell into my lap. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to say yeah. Why yeah, not? you seem to be the one that wants to savor the experience and yeah. more, than, more than anything I, else. To be honest, Tony, I've had to work on that a lot. Like, in, I think, yeah. And, and that's what I really tried to work on this year and, and last year. Last year was, obviously, I skied exceptionally well for me last year um, and kind of well beyond what I expected for myself and I enjoyed it I forced my, I not forced myself but I forced myself to enjoy it I forced myself to go to Hilltop last year when we were here we went to go see went to go see the city and go out and maybe that made you tired but it's it's the experiences and the stuff that I was never very good at when I was younger because I just wanted to focus on the skiing but trying to enjoy the experience a lot more and go out there and do things and and have a little bit more fun than just 
competing, you know? Yeah, and I'm definitely jiving with what you're saying right there because, I mean, we had the opportunity as a crew at TWBC to actually go to Milan. We went to Rome and see the yeah. Colosseum, the Trevi mm-hmm. Fountain, and I think one, one, one other thing, like the Altar of the Fatherland. And then in Greece, we went to Athens. We yeah. saw the Parthenon and all, and all, that, all, all, all that cool stuff as yeah. well. So, I mean, I, I know it's a bit of an aside, you know, but... You know, it's it's important to to devote enough time to doing those kinds of trips. You know, because you might not ever get an opportunity to do it again, and that's a lost opportunity. Yeah, and an interesting uh, kind of a way that someone kind of helped me think about it is is because again, I was I've always taken skiing seriously. I'm a very I, I want to we put we put a lot of time, effort, money, and and stuff into it, and I want to make every. I want to make the chance out of every opportunity that I get, whether it was a junior Europeans when I was ten or or now. But if I come, if I fly all the way to this event, so I've had to fly all the way from London to get here, and I focus every single bean of ounce of concentration that I have on this event, and I ski bad, I go away, and the only experience that I've had of this event was skiing. Yeah. Whereas if I go and I enjoy my trip to Seattle, I go see the fish market, I go see this, have an amazing donut, have all this kind of stuff, and yes, and the part of it mentally is in my head that it, it relaxes me. It makes me go, I've had an amazing trip this far, skiing is the cherry on top and that's it's interesting you'll you'll hear a lot out of it of um, will asher obviously i look up to him a lot and and kind of learn from how he does things but um he's like this this is the fun bit this is the bit we should enjoy so if we go out there and we enjoy it vince distracted me um go out there and enjoy it and and the skiing is here for the fun yes we want to be competitive yes we want to have uh, put out the best scores we can but the more pressure you put on yourself the worse it's going to be so that's something i've tried to force myself to learn and Hopefully, we'll keep learning on in the future. Interesting that you mentioned the donut. Were you, were you, was oh. it like? Was it like that? Oh, was, it, was it like that scene in in, in what was in what was it? Uh, average, uh, no dodgeball where the guy was like trying to resist the donut. <laughs> oh, there was no resisting. We went around. We went around. <laughs> was it Pike's Place Market? And oh, the donuts, the cookies, the home oh, Starbucks. So good. So good. <laughs> And 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 a, and a bet and I bet you fall off the wagon a little bit when you get home with like a bit the, with the, like the bacon butties you a know, little and bit <laughs> a little bit this year I've, I've been, and that's that's kind of all part of the reset I went home and obviously enjoyed the food but I really tried to kind of get get my body back it's hard when you're traveling around and you're doing all this stuff and you're in airports oh pizza Milan pizza like you can't not go to pizza and not have pizza when I, you can't not go to Milan and not have pizza and ice cream you know so yeah. it was actually it was actually really nice to go home reset my diet a little bit get my body back where i want it to be and and that's kind of why i'm looking forward to the american stop who knows how we're going to ski but um i feel like my body's in the right place my mind's in a little bit of a better place and let's see how it goes i guess is there stuff that stuff that that you experience in europe that you brought back from there you know i mean for my part you know i'm tr- i'm trying to change my diet i don't know whether you've seen but i've maybe looking lost very skinny looking very athletic I, I, I don't know if I can call it athletic, but <laughs> but but watch me about sixty pounds uh, leaner, and ah, yeah, you, you might get the picture. But one of the things that I brought home a little bit was my, you know, my penchant for prosciutto and melon, mm-hmm. you know, for breakfast, you know, just yeah. a simple slice of prosciutto, and lots of melon, yeah. and I'm in, and I'm, and I'm into into all of that, and just yeah. just some just some clean eating during the day. Yeah. Is there anything that you've done like that? I, I, I doubt whether you can. To be call. honest, Tony, my I'm the the my I love food. I just I adore food i uh, you can i will just eat and eat like I'll, can I'll you be cook full. it though yeah yeah that's what i trained in which is another problem um, but I you, just, you trained in the culinary arts oh, yeah that was my that was my studying at home three years of it but i love i love love food and i don't stop so for me it's like rob you're just not gonna eat just don't eat because I, I love it and just enjoy it and that's not a good learning lesson but like i will just eat a meal and just and if like say you put me in a golden corral now i would eat that buffet just straight up until i was so full and just trying to be a little more restrictive. I'm just going to go in the corner here and cry <laughs> while you, while you, while you continue on. Oh, I love Gordon Crowell. but no, uh, no. Just again, it's just trying to get the diet right and get a little more, and and get, and then that gets your headspace in the right place. Then you feel more ready. Then you feel more athletic. And now I feel feel like we can hopefully put some good scores out. 
Well, you, well, you, I mean, you cert- I mean, you certainly got the body type. I mean, you got the metabolism and everything going for you. So basically, you can stuff everything that's gluten down your down your gullet, and you still won't put on a pound. Oh, well, I put on a pound, Tony. Or we put on a pound. <laughs> no, you just got to be a little more sensible with it, and that's kind of hopefully the way that I'm doing and trying to create a sustainable way of eating for the rest of my life but i just love food i can just eat and eat but okay and you and on top of all of that you you've uh, you have to control diabetes don't you yeah yeah so type 1 diabetic um and and that actually it's it's really interesting to see when when i start to look after my diet a little bit more it does get easier to control and obviously it's type 1 so it's not everyone says oh you're too much sugar but it's nothing to do with your diet it's purely a genetic disease um, or disease? What is it? What's it? Not disease. I don't think disease is the right word. I think it's what's it called? A autoimmune disease or something like that. But uh, but yeah, it's it's like anything. It's a challenge. But um, you got to kind of learn to live with it and get on with it and and get it right, basically. You got one of those little discs on yeah, your arm with the, the, with the app, app and they were having a good look at those through security today. They were not happy. Like, what's that? I'm like, oh, has it got liquids ah! in? No, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TSA freak over that kind yeah. of stuff, oh, but uh, but I mean that's that's probably that's probably not the best time to get freaked out, you know, when you oh, when you're tired be, and yeah. you want to get off that off that plane. Yeah, no, I don't freak out. It's all good. We're all good. We, we got here. Manson's in the fridge. We're all alive. Okay, and and the trend for a lot of skiers is actually to put Apple Air tags in their bags. You know, I've got that. You've got that. Oh yeah. Tell us, tell us, tell us a little bit about the story. You know, with this one, you know, because when you landed. Oh yeah. Well, you will <laughs> land, and obviously the first thing you do is, oh, where's my bag? Where's my bag? Where's my bag? And then it it, it hadn't refreshed because for some reason there's just no data in Seattle runway. What? Uh, I had like zero bar of five G, so it wasn't refreshed. I'm like, all right, just stay calm. Doesn't matter if you find out now or in 30 minutes. Your bag will be here or, will, or it will not. Still no refresh. Still no refresh. Get that. Refreshes to be 30 minutes ago is in Hounslow, England. I'm like, well, that's Hounslow. not... Hounslow. Hounslow. Well, that's not Seattle, is it? That's a very no. long way away from Seattle. I'm like, God. And then... Um, and then I'm walking through stress. And, oh, my bag's not going to turn up. I need to practice. Oh, da, 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 da. All this stuff. And then refreshes in my hand. Like, oh, bag's here. Sweet. Relax and go off. All right. <laughs> but I had a little bit of a stress. Just a little bit of stress, you know. So I mean, you, so I mean, you, you've you've uh, you base yourself a little bit in England and a little bit in the United States, you know. Yeah, so it's I an mean, awkward question when someone asks me where do I live. I'm like, yeah, yeah kind of, <laughs> kind of wherever. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and and I mean, a season or so ago, you actually were on site for the collegiate national championships. You were doing interviews and stuff like that, you know. You know, as, as part of the HO's coverage of the event, but. Didn't any didn't anything tug against you a little bit, like saying, you know what, you should you should give collegiate skiing a try. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it it it's amazing for the sport, without a doubt. It is amazing, and it looks like fun, and everyone's in the team, and everyone's. Um, I mean, there's not really any bad words that could be said about it. I no. mean, they, the people have a great time. Um, it keeps people. The biggest thing I think is it keeps people in the sport for four years. It gives you a way that you can go to college and you can ski and you can compete. Um, but it just it's it's not it wasn't for me and that's and that's kind of how it is um, there's yeah it, it wasn't kind of my right career path you know um, and that's and there's, there's could, obviously you, there's you, obviously you, you reasons can st- you can still get into a collegiate program certainly I mean when I got into collegiate skiing I was 27 I know yeah, but you're, you're considerably younger than that yeah but it's 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 a different it's not it's not my priority you know it's I I did my study and I wanted to have a skill. Um, the skill being cooking and the skill being catering, yeah, <laughs> and um, and that's and obviously we have we have back home we have family we have businesses and ski school and um, and I think personally for me spending four years at a college and maybe getting a little rowdy and, and doing all that stuff it would have been a great time it would have been a lot of fun like everyone says it is mm-hmm. uh, but the, the degrees don't really transfer that well back home if everyone to go home and there's, I mean there's, I'm not gonna. Oh, into some it. degrees do. I mean, uh, I, I mean, like, I, I mean, know. like, I mean, like Jenny and Eleanor. I mean, yeah, they're, 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 they're both on great career paths. They are on very good, career, but they spent nine years at college. Yes, they did. And I love Eleanor and Jennifer to bits. I'm not this. That's why I don't want to get into it. But that it just for me personally, I I see why everyone goes to it. I think that it would be an an insane amount of fun, and I think it's great for skiing because it gives people the path to be in skiing for like four, five, six years more. It gives them the time to find themselves, maybe find that prof- professional path. You know, I luckily I had kind of COVID for that. I think which saved me a lot. Um, but yeah, just for me, it just it wasn't the path that kind of we decided to go down, and um, and I wanted to commit to kind of the the part of the skiing bit, get my 
get my studies back home so that I have a backup and of course um, and then you just never quite know where life takes you you know like with the vlogging and with all that kind of stuff and um, and you just find find stuff that, that you enjoy and that you can hopefully make a living off all right before we go back to the actual skiing part you know what's what's a free course meal for Rob Hazelwood if, if, if you were to you know go if you, were, if you were to go to like a, an imitation Gordon Ramsay establishment with chef with chef Hazelwood what 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 would the starter be I see starters I'm not a big starter guy I'm not a massive starter guy but the mains going back home and Americans won't know this but pork belly I don't know for some reason it's just, I've never made it to America well, like, I think they've got. I think like, they've got a pork. No, but they never have dish. the fat on. They never have the crackling on it. So, like, no. slow roast pork belly with crackling, like mashed potatoes, roast potatoes, amazing, like pork you, and like dessert would have to be like a sticky toffee pudding. Like, just oh. this is proper English home stuff, you know. You're not into lamb or anything like I, that, or like I do a enjoy Sunday it. lunch I enjoy or something it. like that. Oh yeah, a Sunday lunch you can't beat. Can you? You can't beat it. But I'm a big time mains desserts. Get it in me. Sweet profiteroles. Oh yeah, I do like a profiterole. <laughs> I can make a good profiterole actually, creme pat. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's uh, that. Yeah, that sounds absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and uh, now, now, now I've now I've put on like about three or four pounds just, <laughs> just listening thinking to, about it. Just, just, just thinking about it. But let's get back to your skiing a little bit. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're I mean you're here in the United States. You've got expectations of what you want to accomplish for the last third of the season. So starting with Hilltop, I mean. I mean, everyone wants to win. I mean, I mean, I haven't, I haven't spoken to a skier yet that uh, that it, that doesn't aspire to that aim. Yeah. But I mean, but what are, what are you trying to do elementally to try and get you in a better place so you could potentially come away with here with the victory? Do you mean like what am I working on or what are my Correct. goals? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. What are you working um, on? Just, just kind of keeping going with. Like I say, it was nice to have those few weeks back home to to ski a lot and have some consistency and and figure out some stuff that that maybe i've been kind of lacking um this season and just trying to dial in on some keys but uh, just just the usuals really just trying to get trying to get back into the headspace of all right my goals are to run to get to my gates for starters and and run 39s like for me uh, the, the, the opportunity will come the opportunity will always come if you can make finals like uh, to me I'd love to win. Who's, 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 who I'm doesn't? Not, Who I'm doesn't want to win? Either, I'm not like everyone wants to win, and my, my goal is to win. But I'm not coming into this event and going, if I don't win, I'm mad. <laughs> you know, like yeah. that's not. But that's not Life's the way. Life's too that, short for that. Yeah, it's. It, I'm kind of in the in the headspace of right. You've turned up to an event. That's the first start. You've put your hat in the ring. Yeah. I need to go out there. I need to get two good prelim scores or one good prelim score, technically. But yes, I want to go out there and I want to put in a solid prelim score. I want to make that finals. That is the first big tick in my book. If you make finals, you're in the you, uh, your hat. Okay. In the ring. Does it, does your mindset change significantly? I mean, if you if you like say you run 39 and you get about two uh, a third the way down 41 off, it's good enough to make it through. Uh, I'm, I mean, based upon the percentages and the numbers and all the rest of skiers and what have you, does that really alter what you do for the second round? You know, do, I mean, does, is this an opportunity to say, hey, let me try something different with the ski and let, uh, or, or try some off tops or that kind it's of stuff? Not, and see, for me, I, I think the people like, again, the Wills, the Johns, the Nates that have had so much experience, for me, it's another, it's another opportunity to get experience on the site, on the conditions with the drivers. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, I'm not a big fan of optops personally for me. Um, I don't, I don't like the jump in intensity. I can do them. I don't mind them, but I prefer to now. I prefer to go out at 35. If I was, mm -hmm. I think say that was to happen, I'd probably go out at 35. Yeah. And again, it's just another. It's another. It's another set. It depends if you're at like Swiss when you got three rounds in one day, and maybe you want to save some energy, and you can go at it that way. But here you have a day in between. It's another day is another set to to do do your best i'm to looking to forward to someone out. having the nads to go out of 38 off right off the yeah. door no yeah well and, and again in, in anything other than a runoff yeah i mean people will um uh, people i mean nate did nate did in in lake 38 same yeah, energy. He did. yeah of course he did uh, but i'm not and, and that's for me it's the comp it's all about the confidence so going out of 35 and just and just getting another set in and this is obviously that's like dream worlds I, again, I don't come into an event at my level, at my uh, which I probably should. Maybe I'm wrong in thinking that, but it's always worked for me to be right. Rob, your goal is to get your gates and go through your, and get through 39, 
and then once you do that then the opportunity is open then it's good there's, then it, there's then no it's house point, money there's no point in me going here right i'm running 41 this weekend and missing a 39 <laughs> like that's I, that's just that's just kidding myself yeah so, so i can't point the cart before the horse right no yeah and that's and 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 again that's like joel poland's a great example he's a very big believer in manifestation and like getting things out there and i am gonna do this i am gonna do this and that's when the difference is like right you stay calm i've got eight more tournaments this season if I get through my 39s, I keep getting my two, three, four, 41s, the opportunity and the chance will come that I'll get myself on a podium or get myself in that top five or get yourself up there, you know? And that's, you just got to be in it to win it. And my goal isn't 41s, 41. It's fast, it's narrow, it's tough, it's hard. I yes. can't go out there. I'm not, I'm, don't go out there and go, right, I'm having three today. It's, I'm turning one and let's see where we're at. If I turn two good, then I'm turning three. But if we're not, then we're, and you know, it's like... Step by step. It's, it's, it's big time. My goal is to get through that 39 because I know I can do that. I know yes. I can control that. If I get that far, sweet. And then 41 is just this goal. All right, then. Who Next. knows? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Cross your fingers and hope you don't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you're part of the Water Ski Pro Tour. I mean, you've skied a number of events, yep. you know. And there's certainly, I feel, a lot of room for optimism uh, going forward uh, with, 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 with the series. Uh, what's, your, what's kind of your take on it so far? I think it's great. I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's a tour. Mm -hmm. It's a tour. There's, we, there was, I mean, there was twenty. I think two have been cancelled now. Uh, I think there's eighteen tournaments this season. Like that's a lot. Like I say, yeah. I had, I had three months non-stop tournament every weekend. That's something that I could have only dreamed of. And I and I was, I used to. I'll say it again. Like I sit when I was a child and well, not even a child. Every year, if I'm not an event, I'm watching it. It's on the TV. It's, it's been my life goal to be able to come and do events and have skiing on a tour and obviously it died away a little bit there was less tournaments and now all of a sudden I can it's my second year on the tour I guess and I have a tour I can go around and I'm busy I have to plan my travel I have to do this it's a it's a proper full time job essentially and it's and it's exciting for me to be able to say that and do it and um, and yeah it's very exciting the opportunities that it's that it's brought up and hopefully what we'll see in the future what frustrates you about this sport how frustrating it is <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I don't know I, but I, I think that's I don't think anything frustrates me about the sport I think it's just a high level sport in general it's the unknowns it's the it's the flying across the world with your skiing going right you've got to back yourself here is there anything about the politics that you wish will change uh, oh you're trying to get I see why you're starting the the this podcast starts off with a waiver saying that we don't <laughs> <laughs> what do you I mean politics uh I don't know. I don't think that's really for me to say. Yeah, because, um, I mean, we started the season with a rope controversy, didn't we? Oh, yeah, I've already got my puppy self in trouble over that. <laughs> um, no, I mean, there's always stuff, isn't there? I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an organisation, right? It's an organisation of people. Um, but all I can say now is there's 18 tournaments. Yeah. That's all, that's all, all I can say is how is that a bad thing? Some, there was, I mean, there was a tournament with 30 grand this year. Like, how is that a bad thing? There was no. two yeah. tournaments on one weekend with $25,000 prize pot. Like, how can that be? Everyone's saying, oh, the sport's dying. How is that bad? Like, I just... Uh, how, how can the sport actually, be dying when, like... I actually spoke to Dave, and he said that there, that there is a significant uptick in popularity within the sport of water skiing based oh. upon the numbers he's getting at, at, uh, at HO. Well, you go on you go on TikTok right now, full-on millennial style. You post videos here, like, within the past four videos, three of them went viral, and there's five million between them views like that's yeah. five million people have seen the sport joel's out there doing his awesome stuff posting getting millions of views elizabeth montavon's posting millions like i don't honestly see maybe i'm being positive maybe this is just because i want to keep doing this because i want it to keep course. going but i i think the sport's trending in the right direction uh, maybe there could be a few um a few different opinions at the top um but i think the sport is very much trending in the right direction and um yeah, I'm excited to be a part of it, hopefully. And yet no one knows where the worlds are going to be next year. <laughs> yeah, but obviously that's not great, but the Pro Tour's here. Yeah, this of is course, the, yeah. The, the, the world isn't... It, it's, it's very important. The world, if you win a world championships, that is, for the rest of your life, you are a world champion. That is a mm -hmm. matter. This is, I'm, by no means, the world isn't important. But the Pro Tour is what I dreamed of as a child. Obviously, I dream of being a world champion as well. But like being a part of the Pro Tour is insanely cool, and being able to do 18 tournaments, 
and actually yes there's some tournaments that aren't in it and whatever I have my opinions on that um, I, I just think it's incredibly exciting that I can go to 18 tournaments this season I know I keep saying it but that's mad to me indeed indeed so as we're working away towards the end of season come November Thanksgiving Day will, will, will come and pass what will you be raising your glass to in terms of being thankful for, uh, for, for certain things that happen? Just been able to do it. Been able to come out here, put my hat in the ring. And, and this is very much for my parents. It's um, like, you've got to be in it to win it. You've got to be there. You know, like, there's been no cherry. But I've, I've, to have the opportunities and the support to be able to go to every event, turn up, put my ski on the dock, and hopefully ski my best. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Obviously, it's a little annoying that maybe I haven't done that along the way, but that's pro professional sport. There's going to be season. If I expect to do this for 20 years, I can't expect to have a, a lovely rosy dozy season every single year, you know? And that's um, how it is. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we start the American tour with a good event this weekend or next weekend, obviously, in California, just down the, just down the road, I guess, 17 yeah. hours. <laughs> um, just down the but road. But just being thankful to be out here, do this, and. Be, just keep going at it you know I think it's exciting the opportunities that are coming in the sport and um, it's just generally exciting and I'm thankful for you because I mean Thanks you're because uh, I mean you're out there you're, you're doing your thing you you're, po you're posting your vlogs and everything like that you give it you're giving us the vlog life yeah <laughs> the vlog <laughs> life you know so, so I mean so I mean you I mean I mean there are a few skiers that are out there that will do it that, that will go to a site ski and then leave almost straight away but you're around and you're and you're, you're you're giving it large and you're trying to promote a positive view about the sport going forwards yep shameless plug ho sports youtube channel check yes. out the vlogs and my personal youtube channel obviously um with some other stuff but um i think it's exciting uh, shout out like robert pagosi he's going around he's doing vlogs um and like just I think it's insanely cool to there's so much hype on social media for this sport and it's exciting people are starting to build up a follower base um, and people are starting to get interested in the sport TWC what you guys do gives people a way to watch it and it's amazing just to be able to like my parents obviously sit at home and, and for TWC they can sit and watch it and there's not many they, you never could in the past and there's it's very hard to be able to do that you know and that's and that's another reason that I think the sport's hopefully prospering and we'll keep keep getting better and people are following me i mean who, who I would have thought say, everyone's following you tony you're the man you're the man I, of the hour i i don't you know i dispute that you know i, re I, re I really do i mean it uh, I, I mean it I mean it's you guys that are doing that are doing it i know but it's it's a, it's a group it's it's a group thing and if and people like people like you people like vince um and companies like ho put in support and behind things like the vlogs and the social medias and um, getting creative with the way that we get this sport seen and realizing that that's important to get the sport out there and um, and they're the kind of things that you've got to be thankful for you know being able to get get your name out there get your camera out film some stuff get some laughs get some reactions and it's exciting indeed and in, and in terms of being thankful we'll uh, we'll round off uh, the uh, this uh, this podcast put a bow on top of that normally give uh, people the chance to to, uh, to say who they've uh, to, to thank certain individuals, parents, what have you. So here's your chance. Well, I mean, obviously, my parents, George and, George and Flo Hazelwood, out there ripping it for the OGs. Um, obviously, PWTC, Hazelwood Ski World, where I train back home. They've been amazing this summer. Charlotte Wharton, bless her, I've been chucking her in the, chucking her in the driver's seat, making her drive for me. She's been doing a fantastic job. And, um, and obviously, HO Sports, Stoke Skis, um, and everyone that's, that's helped me kind of be able to come to these events and and offer me the support where hopefully i can do it on the day and i know that flo always always uh, <laughs> yeah my mom know. gets very mad that you never mention it so yeah and i mean thank you mother yeah and i mean she does a fantastic bacon butty and copper tea. she does she uh, does all right then that was rob hazelwood and uh, this is tony Leifert for the twbc podcast and until the next episode it is ciao for now Thank you for listening to the TWBC podcast. Be sure to check out our website at waterskibroadcasting.com. Links to our presence on major social media platforms can be found there, as well as updates to our webcast and this podcast. Duplication or rebroadcasting of this broadcast without written consent of TWBC is prohibited. Subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to join us next time for the next edition of the TWBC podcast.